My name is Pomoroka Blessings, and I'm here to lead you throughout the course of this entire chemical reaction. So now, we have an interesting last lab session, and this lab is entitled Sequential Reactions, Estimation of the Chemical Forming of an Ammonium Salt. Wow. I love this chemical reaction because this particular kind of an experiment because it gets to get it gets to entirely explain what we're supposed to do in this part of the reaction and if it opens our brains in terms of how we think and how we process so many chemical uh, reactions so it's important for you that you understand exactly what is going to happen here and i'm going to make sure that you understand and you get the concept out of this uh, chemical reaction so now let's start so our main focus and general objective in this particular kind of a video is uh, we are supposed to find out or estimate the chemical forming of an ammonium salt. And the ammonium salt that we're talking about in this particular kind of a chemical reaction is what? Is NH4. This is the ammonium salt. I repeat, what we have here is what? The ammonium salt. Now, in this particular part of an ammonium salt, we have the value of X here. And the X is going to represent an ion, be it the chloride or be it the NO3. So now, our exercise in this particular kind of a video, as we do these sequential kind of, kind of chemical reactions, is to find out what is this value of X. Because when we know the value of X, we will know what kind of an ammonium this is. If it is Cl, we'll say, okay, this is an ammonium chloride. If it is NO3, we'll say this is an ammonium nitrate. Reacting with the other part of the reaction going to give us the end product. So in the first part of the reaction, we have the ammonium salt reacting with the formaldehyde to give us the first reactant here, the, the first product, the second product, and also the third product, which is water. So you can see that from the first part of the reaction, this is an, a, a reaction which is yielding water plus a salt. So you have a salt here, you have the other react, reactant here, and with the other product on the other side, then you also have the water. You have the water. Then in the second part of the reaction, this is a titration. We have HX reacting with sodium hydroxide to give us NX plus water. So you can see that the second part of the reaction is actually a neutralization reaction. So to me, what we had here was supposed to be, if this is a base, and in a neutralization reaction, if this is a base, you need to be reacting that with an acid. So a base plus an acid gives us water plus a salt. So we expect this to be a salt. So now the question still remains. Is this value of X the chloride ion or the ammonium ion? So how do we find that? When you get back to your lab session or your lab uh, mind, you find out that you've been given this work here. The general emphasis here is this. Follow this, and I want you to understand exactly what you're supposed to do because I won't be able to give you the exact values. I should not provide you with that, but I want you to think and find out exactly what you're supposed to do. And out of this information, you should be able to make a clear descriptive composition out of the work I'm going to give you. So now let's see. These are representing the number of moles. This is also representing the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So for titration, we're going to titrate three times. The product we're going to get from these, from the first chemical reaction, which is HX, we are going to titrate with sodium hydroxide, and sodium hydroxide is going to be main titrant. So now, after titrating, you can remember that in the second lab session that we had for back titration, we were titrating three times. And after titrating three times, we were getting the mean titer volume. So we're going to get the mean titer vo volume of what? Of the sodium hydroxide. So when you get the mean titer volume of sodium hydroxide, the concentration of the sodium hydroxide in this particular kind of a chemical reaction is going to be given as 0 0.1. So we can find out the number of moles. So I'm saying the concentration of the sodium hydroxide is given as 0 0.1 equal to the number of moles which we are looking for over the mean data volume you're going to get as we do this experiment. When you get that, you're going to find out the number of moles of the, of the sodium hydroxide. The more to more ratio in the first part of the reaction, the second part of the reaction for the sodium hydroxide and the HX is 1 to 1. This is the balanced chemical reaction because there are two atoms of hydrogen the two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen, one atom of oxygen, one atom of sodium, and one atom of sodium. So now, when you do that, you'll be able to find out the moles of what? Of the HX. Because you're going to have the moles of the sodium hydroxide. Why? Because concentration is equal to number of moles over volume 
the moles you are going to get them because we have the concentration of the sodium hydroxide and then we have the mean tight volume you're going to get after doing this experiment you have them so we're going to find out eh, the moles of who? hx we know this we found out because this is over one over one this is just going to be equal to that in the second part we've been told when we get back to the first reaction the balance in more ratio between the ammonium salt and the hx is four so that's why you have hn the number of moles of hx over four number of moles of the ammonium ion over four this second part is going to help us to find out the moles of the what of the ammonium salt remember in the first part we had hx the moles of hx which is which are known we now know them after doing the calculation we are going to put that value there divide four the four there we'll find out the moles of what we're going to find out the moles of n h 4 x also known now here we have these moles because we have this value which is coming from the first part of the reaction this analysis so please guys i hope you get the concept here and i hope you are able to make a clear mental you're able, you're able to have a clear mental picture on how you're supposed to go about these calculations in the second part of this information which has been given we're going to find out the value of y this value of y is going to help us to find out the molar mass of hx because when we know the molar mass of hx we'll be able to determine whether it's a chloride ion or the nitrate ion how do we do that we have this formula here we are just going to get the molar mass of nh4 we have the number of moles of this known and we know that number of moles is given by mass over the molar mass if you have the moles of the nh4 n h4 x and this is an ion remember the first part here there's an ion nh4 so it means it lost an electron here so we have this you're trying to find out what you have the moles you have the mass you're trying to find out the molar mass all right so we're just going to get the molar mass of this you know how you can find out the molar mass nh4 you just find out okay what's the molar mass of this, this is four times that this is one times 14 you find out the total there then you're also going to get the molar mass of the ammonium remember there's a difference here this is the ammonium ion and this is the ammonia plus hx okay good we come back here to also find out the value of y because when you know the value of y you can find out what mx is this other value of y you have mnh4 over mnh4x these are molar masses all right these are what these are molar masses so it means when you have the concentrations you can exactly find out the value of y and when you find out the value of y it will be easy for you to determine whether it's the chloride ion or the nitrate ion so guys this is just the introduction or the principle behind this reaction remember you are starting from the second part of the reaction finding out the moles of the hx because they're going to be given the concentration of the sodium hydroxide as 0 0.1 and they're also going to be given the mean tighter volume which are going to get after titrating then you're going to get back to the second part of the reaction to find out the value of x let us not forget the general objective of this video estimation of the chemical formula of ammonium salt so is it an ammonium chloride or is it an ammonium nitrate so out of this i've given you here you should be able to find out what values these are so now let's get back to the experiment and find out exactly what we are supposed to do so in the principle behind this chemical reaction remember that in the first part of the reaction that we had we had the ammonium salt, which was reacting with the formaldehyde to give us those products. And among the products was HX. And then the other products that we had in the first part of the chemical reaction was water. Then the HX was reacting in the second part of the reaction where we had titration and we're titrating with the titrate for the hydroxide. So now we're here to demonstrate exactly what we're supposed to do. So we are measuring now the ammonium salt. And the ammonium salt here is supposed to be measured. We're supposed to get a mass of 1.3. And remember, we're going to measure using the measuring cylinder. And when you put this one on the balance, it will give you the mass 
of the beaker. So you're supposed to zero this. And when you zero it, it takes you back to zero because what you just need is approximately 1.30 grams of that of the salt. 1.3. You can check that it's is changing. We have 0 0.3, 0 0.92. Okay, we just need 1.3. We're at 1.89. So you can extract. Extracting. We just need 1.30. Okay, we're at 1.29. Just need a little now. Okay, so we have 1.30. So I'm getting 1.3 grams of ammonium salt already measured. After getting this, we're going to get some water to in the cup that we can we can dissolve this. So what we have here is the ammonium salt, and we want to make sure that it is completely dissolved in. Is good water. What we are using here is just tap water. Here we have our rod. We're supposed to make sure it's completely mixed. Okay, so it has completely dissolved. And then we're going to add this in the volumetric flask. So there we go. After adding that, we're going to get to the tap water, okay? And make sure that if you distill water in here, what you're using tap water here, until it goes to the maximum, End point here. So when you come back to the volumetric flask, it has a it has a it has a maximum line at which we're supposed to fill this until it becomes 250 mules. So come back to that water. And it goes to 250. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we are there. This is now 250 mils of the ammonium salt. Let's make sure we need it. Every time you do a thorough mixing, you're supposed to mix this very thorough. What we have here is ammonium salt. So after getting the, the salt, we are supposed to get 25 mils of this, of the same salt that we've gotten from here. So I'm going to add some in the beaker for me to easily bypass this. What we have there is ammonium salt, and I have my conical flask. So I'm pipetting the ammonium salt, and I'm getting 25 mules. And here is my pipette, and I'm supposed to get 25 mules. So when you check here, you can see that it goes all the way up to 20, 25. up to get five. Okay, so we have twenty five mils. 
a check from there that we have 25 mules that are going to transfer to the Conic of Love of the ammonium salt. So remember in the first part of the reaction, the ammonium salt was reacting to the formaldehyde. And we're going to get the formaldehyde. So we're not going to use the same pipette, we have to use a different one to avoid mixing them and getting wrong measurements. So here we go. We're going to use this beaker to transfer the formaldehyde. And the formaldehyde, there we have it here. We're transferring five mules. The lab man you're saying, only transferring five mules. And what five mules? I think you're able to see from there that we had five mules into the conical flask. While we had the ammonium ion. So now we have a reaction in here. The ammonium salt has been combined with the formaldehyde. And the end products, remember we had water, what the HX, then what the amine in that group. We're just going to wait for two to five minutes to allow this reaction to occur. So down here, the ammonium salt has been mixed with the formaldehyde in the first part of the reaction. And then what we had was our products, we had water, the HX, which was the mineral acid, and then also had the hexamine. So in the second part of the reaction, we are titrating and the titrant that we have here is the titrant that we have here is sodium hydroxide. But remember, as instructed in the lab manual, we're supposed to add two to three drops of the phenolphthalein or the indicator. And we have the indicator here. One, two. Three drops. Okay. So you can see that what we have in here should be mineral acid. And the mineral acid reacts in the sodium hydroxide, where we have the sodium hydroxide as the main titrant. This is the neutralization reaction. And after neutralizing, we're supposed, we're supposed to make sure that we get a faint pink color. So now let's observe from here. I want you to see exactly what we're going to, the color changes that we're going to have in the conical flask. We're titrating. We're starting from zero, we started from zero, until we get a, pink, a, 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 a faint pink color. Remember that we're titrating until we get a faint pink color. I want you to observe exactly the, the color changes we're going to have there. And we get the faint pink color. Okay, I think I can see the faint pink color there. So we did titrate. So this is the first titrant that we have here. So we are going to record the mass and from, you're going to record the volume. So when you record the volume, you have the first uh, volume for the sodium hydroxide. And then you're also going to do the second part of the titration. You're also going to do the third part of the titration. So you're going to have three values titrating using the same procedure. And after doing that, you're going to find out the mean of those values. And what you're going to call that value is the mean titer volume. So after performing this experiment, remember what I said? The volume you're going to get for the sodium hydroxide from the burette is the mean data volume. The concentration of the sodium hydroxide has been given as 0.1. You can find out the number of moles in the second part of the reaction. And then you can determine the value of that X. And that value of X can either be the, 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 the nitrate ion or the chloride ion. So this is basically how you work out this chemical reaction, and this is how the entire experiment works out. Thank you so much for paying attention. Remember to subscribe to the channel, Blessings Academy of Health Sciences. And yes, it's yours truly, Pomodoka Blessings. Thank you.